My dick hasn't worked since the new meds. Let's play Zelda CDI. Once upon a time, Nintendo would contract Sony to help build them a game console which would be a Super Nintendo with a CD drive. Due to licensing disagreements, Sony walked out of the project. They would later take what they learned making that technology to make the PlayStation. Later, Nintendo would work with Philips on the same concept. However, that deal fell through as well, and the Super Nintendo CD was never made. However, contractually, Philips was allowed to use Nintendo's characters on anything they wanted, so they decided to make some games using Nintendo's IPs, one Mario game and three Zelda games. 2004, on a website called Sheezyart, a man calling himself Super Yoshi would create a video he called Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 Remixed, creating the very first official YouTube poop. 2006, a YouTuber named Duke of Fortune Man, inspired by these videos, makes a video entitled The Best Zelda Game Ever, which would feature the cutscenes of two Zelda CDI games, Link the Faces of Evil and Zelda One of Gamelon, making what many people have accepted to be the first CDI YouTube poop. And that video would spawn another, and another, and then so many CDI YouTube poops that it would be impossible to count them all. These videos, as well as the original cutscenes would get so ingrained into internet culture that everybody knew every line, every frame of animation by heart. Today, we're going to be exploring these two games and seeing what makes them what they are. So here it is, the video that as an ex-YouTube pooper myself, I was destined to make someday. This is Zelda CDI. Faces of Evil and Wanda Gamelon, who we will refer to as Zelda CDI from here on, were developed by Animation Magic, a small Russian video game studio whose games all had a distinct art style to them that has become a meme in and of itself. Now because the CDI wasn't originally meant to be a game console, there were tons of technical limitations which held the games back including underpowered hardware and unresponsive controls, which were even worse if you were using the wireless CDI controller. I mean, it's just a fucking TV remote. Try playing Doom Eternal with that shit. Animation Magic was given a budget of $600,000 and about one year to make both games. To make this faster and easier, Year, it was decided that the games would use the same engine and be developed as similar games. The background art was done by artists who were local to the Animation Magic Studio in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and the cutscenes were done by a Russian team who were flown in to work on the games. The legendary voice acting was done by theater actors, none of which realized that many years later their words would get spliced and mixed into the most amazing things imaginable. Now used to, you had to fight with emulators or get a real CDI to play these games, and it was a real hassle. But now, thanks to the efforts of a man known as Doppley, these two games are now available for PC as the Remastered series, and that's how we're going to be playing them today. So we're going to start off with Faces of Evil and see where we go from there. Here it is, the cutscenes that started a generation of memers. Gee, it sure is boring around here. My boy, this piece is what all true warriors strive for. I just wonder what Ganon's up to. Your Majesty, Ganon and his minions have seized the island of Korodai. Hmm, how can we help? It is written, only Link can defeat- Has anybody figured out whether this is a real language or not? I know that's the Jesus fish in the middle. What would Guanum do? Ganon. Great, I'll grab my stuff. I can't hear grab my stuff without thinking of this one YouTube poop I saw where Link said, Hey Zelda, grab my stuff. There is no time. Your sword is enough. Can I say this is one of the few Zelda games that actually gives an explanation to why Link doesn't have any equipment? Link always seems to never have anything he had in the previous games in every single game he's ever been in. Same thing with Adol in the Ease games. If I get at least one Ease fan in the comments, I'll be fucking happy. I want to know I'm not alone. How about a kiss for luck? You've got to be kidding. Squadala, we are off. I think we've all wondered what squadala means, and I don't know either, but Urban Dictionary says it might mean you'll always be behind your prey. I don't know where they got that, but you can also buy a mug that says squadala for $33. Dude, I could make my own mug that looked better than that. Wow, what are all those heads? These are the faces of evil. You must conquer each. I guess I'd better get going. Here is the map. 
Where do you wish to go? Can I go to a better game? Well, I guess we better get going. But where do we go? I guess we'll go to Goronu. Now imagine it's the 90s and the newest Zelda game is linked to the past. And then you play this. As you can see, it's a side scroller. Kind of like Zelda 2 was a side scroller. The reason for this is because when they were developing the Faces of Evil and Wanda Gamelon, Zelda 2 was the newest game. Link to the Past did not come out yet. And when Link to the Past did come out, the CDI games were still being worked on. So the idea was this was supposed to be a follow-up to Zelda 2, kinda. They figured, well, Zelda 2 is a side-scroller and it's the newest game, so that's where the games must be heading, huh? So that's why the Zelda CDI games are side-scrollers. It's full of a lot of little quirks, like the hit detection's kinda wonky, and to pick up any item, even the rupees, you have to swipe them with a sword or else you can't get them. You can't just touch them and get them. There's a way to change that, but we'll talk about that later. Now let's talk about the rupees. The rupees are an interesting rabbit hole in themselves. Now you see me getting a lot of red rupees and you're thinking, wow, you're getting a lot of rupees. I mean, each of those is 20 a piece. No, because these are not rupees. They are rubies. Remember what Morshu said? As long as you have enough rubies. So they do rubies. They had to be different. They couldn't get with the program and do rupees like everybody else in Hyrule. They had to do rubies. I wonder what the exchange rate is from rupees to rubies. One of those things nobody cares about but me. In a normal ass Zelda game, a red rupee rupee is 20 rupees but no not in this game it's one ruby and the green rubies are five luckily there's normally lots of enemies to kill so you can rack up some rubies pretty quick and then you can hook yourself up with some lamp oil rope and bombs it's a good thing the lamp oil is the cheapest thing in the store because it's going to be the thing that you use the most the games have this bizarre fetish with dark areas for some reason it's like you're always wandering into places that are completely in teeth totally dark. So that's my strategy for you guys. Buy as much lamp oil as humanly possible once you get the lantern. The ropes, I don't know if I ever used them throughout the whole playthrough of Faces of Evil. They're supposed to make it easier for you to get to higher platforms, but as far as I know, looking at my footage, I don't think I ever used them. I did use them in Wanda Gamelon, though. I'll show you that later. The bombs you will use a lot because they open up new areas, and there's some enemies and bosses that can only be killed by bombs. Unfortunately, they're the most expensive thing in the store, so you have to go outside, farm some rupees, go back in there, and get some damn bombs. Wouldn't it be nice if all you had to do to get some money is kill some bad guys? You go to the retro game store, you want Earthbound, it's like you're a few dollars short. Okay, let me go outside and farm some money. I know I'm showing this one area a lot, but this is where I farmed rupees the most. I wonder if Morshu's watching me out the window as I'm doing this. He's like, yeah, farm those rupees. Make that bank. Anyway, one thing that's kind of nice is the shield actually works in this game, like it does in a lot of Zelda games. For it to work, you have to stand completely still. Link's just standing there letting people throw shit at him and he's like hey you can't hurt me bitch i got a shield link does a stand-up comedy show and everybody throws tomatoes at him because his jokes suck and he just hides behind the shield is like kiss my ass i'm funny damn it i have a lot of trouble with this one rupee ain't i yeah fuck it biggest crab i ever caught <laughs> it's a goma you're pretty good here thanks I never understood this cutscene. Why did the fisherman tell Link it was a crab when it was clearly a goma? Well, either way, we got the power sword. So now we can shoot shit a little bit. I think the biggest problem I have with this game is the elemental enemies. Yeah, we got some of that shit going on. You got enemies that can only be killed by snowballs and other ones by fireballs. And those things only spawn in certain worlds, so you have to go back to those worlds, farm some snowballs and fireballs, and be able to kill the enemies you need to kill. There's also some places that don't seem to serve any purpose. It's just some place that's full of enemies. But hey, they're spawning snowballs. Of all places to land. Hey lady, I don't know if you know this, but your house is slam full of enemies. You just let all that shit come in, huh? Raised in a barn? You're not afraid of dragons, are you? Of course not. Then get my necklace back from Gliok, okay? Pretty please. Do these people know anything about personal space? Yo, this is a bop. The music in these games are actually kind of cool. For some reason, I had a lot of trouble with this part. It's got all these octopuses that throw projectiles at you, and they seem to throw like two or three at a time. You gotta get really good at using the shield. Even then, I'm still getting my ass handed to me. And then at the end of it, there's a guy that needs to be killed by snowballs. 
shit, for fuck's sake. This was the first area where I was really like, I really hate this game. Well, no one said these games were good. Look what has happened. In the darkest nightmare hour, when not moon nor sun has risen, I take Zelda in my power. I shall keep her in my prison. Fair enough, Ganon, you a poet all of a sudden? So here's something that's real aggravating. The same button you use to get to the menu is also the same button you use to open a door or go through a path. So when you're in these dark areas like this, you need to like walk away from the door and then turn the lantern on. And Guanum just stays in the way. Get out of the way, you old bastard. Oh, do I have to do that first part? Oh, God, fuck. This game, man. You know, this part in the volcano wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for these spinning wheel things. Literal Hot Wheels. They follow you everywhere and suck up all your health. And it doesn't help that every time I die here, I have to start over and fight the octopuses and the red guys again. God, fuck. Would it be too much to ask to have some post-hit invincibility or something? God forbid. Oh, you could take them out with snowballs? Well, that would have been nice to know before I went in here with only two snowballs. Guess we're going back here to get some more snowballs. Anyway, fuck that. It's time to look and see Goronu. Look and see Goronu. Wake up, sleepy bones. Find the living and cut their vile throats. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, I died as I entered the door. I may be hideous, but after a year of being frozen, you will beg to join me. <laughs> so to kill Goronu, you need the fire bombs. So you better have stocked up. You can't kill me. No. 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 Sucks to be you, friend. What's nice about the remaster is it actually tells you where the hell you're supposed to go. You didn't have that in the original. You were just left to your own devices to try to figure out where you're supposed to go. Oh shit, I gotta do the duck walk. I tell you, sometimes because of the hand-painted backgrounds, it's hard to tell what's a platform and where you can go because it's all one static background and invisible walls and platforms. My God, do you think that's enough bats? No, we need at least two or three more. I'd say your chances are a million to none. But let's have fun anyway. Okay, you gooberhead. This part had these annoying hands that grab you and take some of your life. What's bad is you can't really get down there and take care of the ones at the bottom. You pretty much have to get hit by them no matter what. And look how many hits they take. Damn. Good grief. Now to fuck up Mr. Pigman. Ah! Ah! Golly! I had a sex toy that did that to me one time and my dick was still in it. Oh, it's nice to know you didn't bring back my hearts. Bring back my hearts. That sounds like a country song. Bring back my hearts now, baby. And bring back my truck. Look how Militron makes his warriors. Worthless Caridian, you must be hardened with fire. Go and kill! Worthless Korean, you must be hard! Can we take a moment to appreciate the background right here? This looks really nice with the animated water and everything. And the music's really nice in this stage too. Here's what a good game reviewer I am. There's a bell in my inventory and I'd have no idea what it does. I never used it for out the whole game. I, I have no idea what it does. Maybe you call a boo with it to steal some stars. Feel the fire of war! Alrighty, Militron, it's time for you to go night-night. Good night. Oh, I guess it's time for me to go night-night. Damn, Militron, I'm gonna kill you twice for that. I'll kill you so hard, you'll go to hell, too. Oh my goodness, this is awful! That's my review of this game. Oh, cool, I can do this now. I will use this zero times. You might as well have just given me a power-up that makes the sword make a funny noise. Pocket sand, pocket sand. Pocket sand. Hey look, I bombed some Dodongos. Nice teeth, by the way. He doesn't compare to me, though. Oh, it's this guy. Where are you heading, partner? I'm going to fight Slutko. Don't fight him, feed him. Mm, something spicy. Know what I mean? I like this guy, I don't know why. Through the eye of Glutko lies the shrine of Koridai. Oh, I'm simply famished. No! 
It, it tastes like a diarrhea. Perhaps just one more. Tastes like diarrhea. I wonder how many YouTube poops did that. Glutgo is ridiculously easy to kill. All you gotta do is throw a bomb at him, and you have to do it twice. Uh oh. You know, overall, I gotta say, the game is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's bad, yeah, I'm not gonna deny that. But it could have been worse, a lot worse. And I think if I would have played the original game on a CDI, it would be a lot worse. But the remaster kind of fixes a lot of quality of life stuff. So it doesn't really give you that much of an accurate representation of how bad this game is. It kind of tries to fix it. It makes you wonder though, why would somebody spend all this time making a remastered version of a shitty Zelda CDI game? Well, I actually got an interview with Dopley, the man behind the CDI remasters, as well as the RZ game that's coming out based on the CDI games. This is some of the stuff he told me. First, I asked him, what made you want to remaster the Zelda CDI games? And he said, It started off as an in-joke between friends. Wouldn't it be funny if there was a remastered version of those games? Remasters were starting to become very popular at the time they started development. It seemed like a project that I could scope out and do. Like many, I always had issues with actually finishing my projects. I underestimated the effort involved, but I persevered and actually finished them. I was also inspired by reading old developer interviews with Dale Desharon and learning about the terrible hand they were dealt in development, low budget, impossible time frame, bad platform, but also seeing the flashes of design brilliance on display. I endeavored to hopefully shine a line on these things that the original games couldn't. I then asked him what was the process taken to bring these games to PC. Like all games, it starts with a design document. I created a design document and a spreadsheet that catalog each and every part of the game. After playing through them myself, recording footage, looking at recorded footage, etc. I worked out what was needed for the game in Game Maker, the engine I developed with, and developed the systems for it. Then it was just a matter of painstakingly recreating everything and then adjusting that, double checking my work, adding new features, bug testing, rinse and repeat. Then I asked him, what do you personally think of these games as far as playing them? I have a soft spot for the original games on their original platform, as the original developers did as much as they could to make those games work. I think they are fairly well designed, barring some issues that come from the games of that vintage, with some creative non-linear pathing much ahead of their time. I do think that the remasters did a good job of bringing out the best of the games, and I do quite enjoy playing them, but I'm probably biased. Also, the cutscenes never, ever, ever get old even after hundreds upon hundreds of hours of testing. And that's it, that's what would possess somebody to remaster a CDI game. At last, you have the vision to find my house. Now you will see the sand crumies that prevent your approach to Ganon. Go with many blessings. You know what, I have played this game and completed it, and still I have no fucking idea what a sand crumi is. Squadala, sand crumi, I think Guanam's just making shit up. Okay, I guess I lied. I found a place where I actually did use the rope, and it looks like there would have been no other way to get over there other than use that. Oh my goodness, this is awful! I'm feeling deja vu here. Once you get to Ganon's Lair, the game is actually a lot easier, because now you've got six hearts instead of three, and the power sword works no matter how much health you have. Normally it only works if you have full health. Join me, Link, and I will make your face the greatest in Koridai, or else you will die. He said the thing! So how do you kill Ganon? Okay, you don't use a sword, you don't use bombs, you don't use lamp oil. You have to throw a book at him. Yeah, just like a cop, you throw the book at him! No! Not into the pit! It burns! Smart thing putting him in a book because nobody reads books anymore. Unless it's an e-book. Can you imagine reading your Kindle and suddenly Ganon staring you in the face? Ugh, why'd you do that? I just saved you from Ganon! You did not. Man, fuck you, bitch! I had to fight a whole bunch of fucking octopuses and Gleox and Gomas and shit to come over here and save your ass. You be grateful, damn it! Well done, Link! Ganon is once again imprisoned. Come. Man, that got exploited Look, to hell. Already Koridai is returning to harmony. The birds are singing. Isn't The bird has beautiful? balls for a chin. Golly. As it is written, you, Link, are the hero of Koridai. I guess that's worth a kiss, huh? Ha! Huh. 
I won! You did not. Oh boy, I just beat Link the Faces of Evil. I don't know how I feel about that. But I guess that's one hole I can punch in my YouTube pooper card. But the video's not done yet. Because we've got Wanda Gamelon to worry about now. Zelda, Duke Onkled is under attack by the evil forces of Ganon. I'm going to Gamelon to aid him. But father, what if something happens to you? I'll take the Triforce of Courage to protect me. But father, what if something happens to you? The Triforce? I, 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 Enough. Chips. I'm so hungry, I could eat my stuff. Now, Wanda Gamelon, there isn't really much to say about it. I mean, I kind of covered everything in the Faces of Evil review, but uh, I will say, you know, same engine, same gameplay, kind of same everything. But I will say that I think Wanda Gamelon is a little easier. I died a lot less than Wanda Gamelon, and I, it was a little easier for me to find out where I was supposed to go. I think a lot of people agree that the shopkeeper in Wanda Gamelon doesn't quite have the same impact as Morshu does. He is pretty creepy, though. Of course I'm on your side, but I still have to sell the stuff. Just pick what you want. I'll handle the rubies. I'll handle your bum bum, too. To change the game up a little bit, I turned on remastered mode when I played Wanda Gamelon. Now, what is remastered mode? Well, I asked Doppley what it was, and this is what he said. For one thing, you can walk over items to collect them. You don't have to stab them with the sword anymore. And they added little arrows over doors that don't make it very obvious that they're doors. And you can access the menu without having to crouch down. Just a little quality of life stuff. Kind of makes the game a little bit more bearable, but just a little bit. Isn't it lovely? Bring some fairy dust and I'll make it a magic cloak. Yeah, uh, what's wrong with your eyes? I feel like I'm watching all those hypnosis fetish animations with the Jungle Book snake. Furries, man, I swear to God. You got the Jungle Book snake hypnotizing people. You got Falco fucking buildings. You got Fifi Le Fume in a prison uniform. There's some weird people in this world. Why can't y'all just like pause? That's a normal fetish. Bunch of goober heads. Hey, I got a new fetish for you. How about you fuck toasters? It's great because you can get a friend in on the action. <laughs> See how brave the little toaster actually is! Oh yeah, I was doing a game review. Remember how I said this one's easier? Well, they got rid of the elemental enemies in this game. But you still got enemies that are only weak to bombs, and some enemies that can only be killed with a certain item, like this mummy guy here. This round! No! It's gone! Ah! Oh, it's Ganon's voice actor, too. There's a lot of crocodile platforms in this game. What is this, Frogger? Pitfall? Maybe I should review more Atari games. Can we watch the Omfak cutscene? Because I love that one. Whatever I see, I shall devour. I like that he turned into the Rolling Stones logo. Oh shit, it's more of those Hot Wheels! Hot Wheels leading the way! Hot damn, so much shit, man! How are you supposed to get past all this? By the skin of your teeth, I reckon. Also, if you have skin on your teeth, you should probably consult a doctor. Alright, Omfak, you gotta go! Got him! My birds! Shoutouts to my Volvic peeps! This is illegal, you know. Nintendo, when I play games on my hack switch, I manage to conceal me when big tits. Feel this magic lantern. I hope it can be of use. But yeah, as far as Wanda Gamelon goes, there's nothing really I can add. It's pretty much the same shit as Faces of Evil, just some different maps is all. So let's go ahead and kill Ganon so we can all go home. You dare bring light to my lair? You must die! Know how you had to throw a book at him in Resident- What? Resident Evil? Faces of Evil. Fucking hell. In Faces of Evil, you threw a book at him, but in this game, you throw a wand at him. <sighs> the chains! No! You haven't seen the last of me! We certainly haven't. There's gonna be about 10 million YouTube poops you're gonna be in. Father! You saved me! Here's the traitor, your majesty. Please, your omnipotence, have mercy. After you've scrubbed all the floors in Hyrule, then we can talk about mercy. Take him away. Yes, my liege. I wonder what happened to Link. Oh, he was a bore anyway. Stop looking at yourself. What happened? <laughs> Nothing, Link. We were just about to have a feast. Great! <laughs> <laughs>
You know, it's because of this cutscene that every time somebody says what happened in a Discord call, I always say, nothing, Link. You would think people would get pissed off by it, but I actually get no reaction to it whatsoever. It's like I'm not even there. Whoo, boy, that is the Zelda CDI games. And it feels good to finally have this damn video finished. I can't believe I took so long to do it. And you know what? I know what's about to happen. I know what's going to happen in the comments section. There's always going to be that one guy. That one fucking guy that's going to be like, Why didn't you play Zelda's Adventure? You want to know why I didn't play Zelda's Adventure? Here is the reason I did not play Zelda's Adventure. Because no one gives a fuck about Zelda's Adventure. The Animation Magic CDI Zelda games and Zelda's Adventure are a good example of the difference between so bad it's good and so bad it's bad. There's a reason nobody made YouTube poops of it back in the day. Because it's fucking boring. It has no charm to it whatsoever. It just feels like a bad FMV game. And that's why I didn't review it, because it's so bad it's not even worth making a review about. While the Animation Magic games are iconic, everything about them is memorable. Can you name one single quote from Zelda's Adventure? Can you name one single thing that was said in that game? No, don't act like you can, because you can't. Damn it, I just kicked my wall and put a hole through it. Well man, I'm excited, because now after playing the Zelda CDI games, I'm all pumped up to play RZ. It definitely looks like it's going to be a continuation of what made the CDI game so exploitable and wonderful. There's only been a trailer and a couple of gameplay videos and people are already making YouTube poops of it. And I love that I know a whole bunch of the people who are working on RZ. I know who these people are. A lot of them used to be YouTube poopers back in the day. Also, this one character that's there, that, uh, that wolf guy, I know who that's supposed to be. I'm not dumb. So I asked Dopley a little bit about RZ. And here's what he told me. RZ the Jewel of Faramore is a spiritual successor to a pair of infamous fantasy adventure games from the early 90s. A love letter to CD-ROM based interactive entertainment of that vintage. It is a stage based action platformer with non-linear elements with an emphasis on exploration featuring hand painted backgrounds, gorgeous sprite art, and fully voiced and cartoon cutscenes animated in a beloved style. I really love how Doppley is kind of tiptoeing around fully saying CDI. You know what's crazy? is Doppley actually got some of the people that worked on the CDI games to work on this game. He says, Rob Dunlevey, a background artist on those original games, has contributed new artwork for RZ, including the gorgeous world map painting featured in the key art. Jeffrey Rath and Bonnie Jean Wilbur contributed their talent towards the game as well. Jeffrey Rath can be heard narrating the trailer. Once they understood that I was pitching sincere and loving homage to the games they worked on, they were fully on board and were a delight to work with. I then asked him what platforms RZ would be available for. He said it'll be available on Steam, Switch, PS4 and PS5, and Xbox. Finally, to close, I said, what do you have to say to any aspiring game devs out there? And he said, stubbornly finish your work and network with other developers. Make lots of friends and collaborate with other creatives. Know your own limitations, acknowledge them, and work with them. I'm extremely fortunate to have the opportunity to make RZ, and it's thanks to a litany of amazing people always supporting me, I am very grateful. Well, man, that's crazy. I can't wait for this shit to come out. Well, anyway, that's a good note to end on. I hope y'all all had a good time watching Zelda CDI and watching me suffer through it. Well, this is Stuart K. Riley, and these wonderful people are my $20 patrons and their wonderful characters. If you want your characters at the end of my video, all you gotta do is pledge $20 to my Patreon and Kippy will help you out. I want to thank every single person that's pledged so far and just sticking with me through all these years and through all my dumb shit. I love every single one of you. You're the reason I keep doing this. Well, anyway, my name's Stuart K. Riley. I hope y'all enjoyed the video and I'm going to get out of here. I will see y'all later.